Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you that are joining this short presentation about Opus. My name's Professor Christoph Lees. Um, uh, I'm Professor of Obstetrics in uh, Imperial College London. I want to tell you a little bit about my experience with Opus over the last five years. So we've been using Opus to train particularly basic skills for doctors and now more latterly midwives. Of course, this was all particularly important at the time of the pandemic because traditional one-to-one -one scanning in an ultrasound room with a sonographer and a patient and uh, someone learning to scan became all but impossible. But we still had the need to train our doctors, midwives and sonographers. So our solution was to use Opus as a simulation system, a remote simulation system. It comes neatly packaged uh, with all the components that you need, uh, and it can be used by someone who's learning to scan at home. What we had to do was develop specific modules. So we developed modules for basic ultrasound scanning. Opus is, however, equally good at more advanced ultrasound, so particularly fetal neurosynology, for example, uh, advanced biometry techniques. What Dr. Anna Clark is going to show you very shortly is how we were able to use Opus after we developed our modules uh, in basic ultrasound. Hi everyone, my name is Anna Clark and I'm an Obstetrics and Gynaecology Registrar and Research Fellow at Imperial. And alongside Professor Lees, I've been working with Opus for the past five years. Over the last few years, we found Opus to be an incredibly versatile and valuable tool for teaching and training in ultrasound. Gaining ultrasound experience can be challenging for trainees and both the amount of dedicated training time they receive and range of cases experienced can vary from hospital to hospital and trainee to trainee. You can see in that photo there some of our trainees using Opus at one of our in-person courses at Imperial. Now following Covid we now deliver these courses remotely and this is of course a huge bonus of Opus. It's small and compact in size, it connects to your desktop or laptop via USB, it consists of a small scanning pad, webcam and replica probe and it allows trainees to scan through real ultrasound volumes that we've collected at Queen Charlotte's on their laptops. It provides real-time feedback, which I will talk about more in a second. And it also allows multiple trainees to undertake ultrasound training simultaneously. Now, what Opus has allowed us to do at Imperial is to create a bespoke basic ultrasound course with 10 modules mapped to the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynaecology's basic ultrasound competencies. And this includes modules covering basic biometry, placental location, um, AFI and CRL. These modules consist of theory videos, tutorials and tips, guided exercises and multiple choice questions, and also free scans. Now, I'm just going to go through what those 10 modules are, and then I'm going to show you some examples of the different features that you may see in each module. So first of all, we start with probe movements. Now this is an introduction to using the ultrasound probe, to probe orientation, to all the different movements that the probe moves in all of the degrees of freedom and how those different movements relate to the ultrasound image that you see on the screen. We then move on to the four chamber view. So how to obtain a four chamber view of the fetal heart. Then we look at fetal presentation and lie. So an introduction to identifying fetal presentation and lie but we also look at spine position as well. Then we look at femur length, so how to obtain the correct plane and to accurately measure the femur length. Then abdominal circumference, so how to obtain the correct plane for performing an abdominal circumference and perform an accurate measurement. We then move on to looking at head measurements. So first of all, we look at obtaining the transventricular plane and how to measure the head circumference and the BPD. Then we look at obtaining the transcerebellar plane and performing a measurement of the TCD. We then look at early pregnancy and we teach the trainees how to perform um, a crown rump length. So specifically we talk about how to date a pregnancy using CRL and then we also look at when it's appropriate to use this measurement and also other alternatives for dating pregnancies at different gestations. 
We then look at placental location and specifically we look at um, identifying the leading edge of the placenta and its relation to the cervix. So training our trainees how to identify whether a placenta is low lying or not. And then finally we move to an assessment of amniotic fluid. So how to measure the DVP and also perform an AFI. And then when you open the modules, this is what you will generally see. So in the middle, you have your scan image. So this is the image that the trainee is producing um, as they scan through the volume. On the right, you have a box there, and there can be lots of different things in this box. So this may have instructions, it may have tips, it may have reference images, it may have videos. Um, there's all sorts of things that they may see in that box. Um, really the possibility is endless. On the left hand side these boxes tend to be more optional so at the bottom you can see there that if the trainee wishes they can have the target target image so this is the target plane that they are trying to achieve. At the top you can see that there's also the option for the simulator to provide uh, GPS guidance so it can see where the trainee is within the oxygen image and it can show the trainee or direct the trainee which probe movements it needs to make to then move to the correct image or the correct plane. Once they've obtained the correct plane, then they can get a score. So you can see there, there's a score out of 10 at the bottom. And this abdominal circumference, quite rightly, has got a score of zero. You can also see that it provides tips and pointers to how you can improve the image. So again, the main error for this image is that it needs more counterclockwise rotation. And you can see there that you can see multiple ribs, it's oval in shape. And actually, if you uh, rotated the probe anti-clockwise, you'll get that nice round image and also the view of a single rib. You can also see at the bottom there that you've got a ruler tool and the ellipse tool as well. So once you've obtained the correct um, image or an image that you're happy with, the trainees can then practice taking measurements. So performing abdominal circumferences, BPD, femur length, etc. The opus will also give feedback on how accurate the measurement they're performing is as well. In addition to this, the modules also contain different things. So first of all, they contain something called geometric exercises. And essentially what these are, are more basic shapes. So the trainee then manipulates these shapes using the probe. And the idea that this is a, a way to teach the trainees probe movements in a much more simple fashion. Now, some of these exercises are very general and other exercises are much more specific to a particular exercise. So for instance, the femur length uh, module has a very specific geometric exercise that the trainees undertake first with the idea that the probe movements they use in this geometric exercise are similar to the probe movements that they're then gonna need to use to obtain a femur length. Each of the module also contains tutorials. So you have video tutorials, which go through the theory and also explain how the trainee obtains the image that they're aiming to get. Um, you can see there's, a, there's an example of a video that we have in, in all of the modules of how to obtain um, the image that they're looking at. So it's a real time video. You've got the probe moving on the maternal abdomen. You've also got a fetus superimposed on the maternal abdomen and you've got the scan at the same time. So you, they can see how the probe moves on the abdomen, how those movements relate to changes in the ultrasound image on the machine, but also how the probe is moving in relation to the baby in the abdomen as well. The modules also have multiple choice questions throughout, so the trainee has an opportunity to test their understanding on the theory aspects of it. Um, and these multiple choice questions will obviously be relevant to the specific module that they're undertaking. And finally, there's also the option to have free scan modules as well. So these are essentially ultrasound volumes that the trainee can scan through and practice, but without those tips, without those reference images. Um, so it mimics scanning in real life much more closely. So as you can see, Opus has allowed us to create a multifaceted learning curriculum here at Imperial for Basic Ultrasound. And this then provides our trainees with a structured, standardized curriculum appropriate for their level of training. 
It also allows the trainee time to practice and develop those fine motor skills and playing recognition skills away from the pressures of the clinical environment. This then bridges the gap between their theoretical learning and clinical training and shortens the learning curve as they start to apply this knowledge in practice and scan on real patients. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed our presentation. That was Dr. Anna Clark explaining how we develop the modules, what they mean and how to use them in simple terms. And our modules cover everything from placental localization to measuring AC, measuring HC, BPD, femur length, all the basic biometric measurements, and seeing the fetal heart, assessing the fetal presentation, looking at amniotic fluid. And we start off with some geometric objects. Once we had developed these modules, we have been teaching trainees in obstetrics and gynaecology uh, for the last year or so. We have a BSc medical student, Nesha Patel, who at the end of this presentation is going to explain to you how we have done a short evaluation uh, to assess the impact of OPUS simulation training uh, on our trainees. I won't tell you what she found, but it's very interesting to note. And please, in this context, note that we are looking at ultrasound training that is at a basic level for novice trainees. We are not assessing it in more advanced training. We believe, however, that it would be particularly useful in advanced training and are developing uh, more specialist modules for this indication. To test the efficacy of Volley Tracer APIS, we created a new module targeting the fetal profile for novices and experts to test. We decided on this image as it's a common place for abnormalities to present and it's also important for maternal bonding in obstetric scanning. Prior to testing the module, we had to collect scans that we can use to create the module and then these were had to be programmed into Volutracer Opus. Opus collects information on time taken to achieve the image, number of probe movements, total distance travelled by the probe and accumulated angling. This data is then stored offline for analysis. So this is the structure of how we carried out testing. To begin with, users completed a pre-test. This is comprised of three exercises and a repeat of one exercise for us to be able to take a screenshot of to be objectively marked. We then asked participants to complete our module. As you can see here, our module was split into two parts in order to break down the movements into easier segments for our participants to practice. And then there was a third part that allowed users to combine both the movements together to obtain the desired image. And interspersed within this were three questions used to test theoretical knowledge of the abnormalities. Following the module, there was then a repeat of the test. Using the same test allowed us to compare the values directly, and the total time taken to complete the module, the pretest, and the post test was an hour. So what did we find? Prior to the module, you can see our novice scores were very low, at zero. But following module completion, accuracy scores were much higher. This can also be seen in the novice confidence. Prior to module completion, the novices scored their confidence at a rating of one. But following module completion, the novice confidence score greatly improved And here's an example of one of the screen captures from the pretest and the same novice's image in the post-test, clearly showing the image has improved by so much in the space of an hour. So overall, carrying out this research has shown that Volutracer Opus is a key tool in improving scanning accuracy. 
The simulator allows trainees to gain confidence and scanning proficiency, which can in turn complement bedside teaching. Nisha Patel has shown you our short evaluation on how training has impacted on the learning curve for novice ultrasound users. In summary, we have found uh, that Opus is a portable and simple solution to simulation training. Uh, we feel that it can be rolled out and used in many other contexts within obstetric ultrasound uh, and are doing just that at the moment. Of interest, we now have a program of teaching midwives to scan using handheld ultrasound and using simulation as our preferred methodology uh, for teaching them how to, to, how to use the correct hand movements uh, and how to uh, develop that 3D orientation that we as people who scan uh, already have, but often takes hundreds of hours or thousands of hours to develop uh, if, you, if you need to start from scratch. In this presentation, what we have aimed to show is that Opus is a very useful tool in simulation training. I don't think any of us would suggest that it replaces uh, conventional training uh, in an ultrasound room with a sonographer and with uh, a, a pregnant woman or a gynecological case. Uh, but what we do think is that it absolutely uh, shortens that training curve uh, between picking up a probe and being able to confidently orientate the probe and assess the fetal anatomy, for example. The next stage, of course, has to be uh, training in an ultrasound room, what I call hand-to-hand -hand bedside training. Uh, but it's really that, that, that learning curve that takes tens, hundreds of hours uh, that we aim to shorten uh, and to steepen that training curve hugely with Opus. And in fact, our experience has shown that we can do it. Our next step with Opus are we're developing neurosynology, we're developing a fecal face um, module. Uh, we're also developing with uh, Gustavo and the team and Romero and the team at Opus, uh, we're developing intrapartum ultrasound, which has traditionally been incredibly difficult to teach. Thank you all for watching. I hope this has been interesting and I'd be very keen and happy to have any feedback from any of you on this presentation. Hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the presentations and look forward to meeting for some of you or certainly hearing from some of you soon. Goodbye.